guys. Today we are going to finish up our flipbooks by adding the animation to it. So you'll need your flipbook, you need your sketches that we did a couple weeks ago, and you need whatever your tools you're going to use to draw your pictures. Uh, so I grabbed a pencil and a Sharpie. You can also color your pictures if you'd like to, and you don't have to use a Sharpie. I just like to trace my pictures. And then if you're going to use markers or a Sharpie, you'll want an extra piece of paper as well so that you can put it between your layers of your book when you're tracing. So the first thing that I recommend doing with your book is numbering your pages. So I already did that part. I went through and I numbered all of my pages 1 through 24. So take a minute before you start drawing and number your pages. And I just did them real small in the bottom corner. That will help you keep track of where you are in your book when you're drawing. All right. So then you're going to decide which of your drawings, which of your designs you would like to use. I'm going to do my balloon, I think, for mine. And we're going to actually kind of work backwards. So when you design your book, when you do your, uh, your animation, we're going to start with the end and we're going to work backwards through the book. So there's a couple ways that you can do that. Sometimes you can just see through your pages. So you could draw your first picture. We're going to start at the end. You can draw your first picture on here. And then when you flip the next page over, a lot of times you can see through the paper. So it makes it so you can just draw your next page without having to get a light or anything to be able to see through it. And you can you can move and adjust your pictures just a little bit at a time that way on its on your own. Sometimes, though, you're not able to see through the paper. So you can do a couple things. One, we can start by drawing our first picture. So I'm going to draw my ground and then I'm going to add my balloon string. As if it kind of fell on the ground is my string. And then I can flip to my next page. But if you can't see through, you can barely see through mine. You can use something underneath it. So I grabbed my cell phone and I put an app on my cell phone that's just uh, was just called Screen Dash Light. If I put my book my book on top of that light, you can see it makes it so that I can see the picture a little bit better. And it's actually even clearer for me than I'm sure it is on the camera. So then I can draw my next picture, but this time I want to make it look like my my book is going back in time. So what would it look like right before the string fell on the ground? The string would probably still be raised up a little bit. Maybe it's still up here. And it's just starting to lay on the ground. All right, something like that. Now, if you don't have a cell phone, it works just as easy. In fact, it's probably easier to just hold your book up against a window. And then you don't have to worry about a cell phone underneath or, or a light box or anything else underneath. Just hold your book up against the window. I can't really do that in the video, so I got my phone. But you can use, use the window instead. Now for the next one, I only want to put two pictures down on the screen at a time so that I'm not seeing the wrong picture. So I'm going to flip the last page backwards and hold my book down. And again, I just want to move my picture slightly. So I'm gradually making it look like my balloon string is standing back up again. For each of my pages. Now the reason that I like to have my page numbers is because it helps me be able to tell when I'm getting towards the middle of my book a little bit easier. So I'm on page 21 right now. There's 24 pages in my book so I know that around page 12 I need to be to the middle of my story which is when my balloon pops. So I'm going to use the other 12 pages to stand up my balloon. Now I can see through my paper, so I'm just going to get rid of my cell phone. Since we'll pass that part, you get the idea. I'm just going to keep on standing up my balloon. Oops, I guess my little triangles have been upside down. That's all right. So that it looks like the string is getting straighter and straighter. I'm keeping my ground in the same place, so I'm not moving all over. I'm to page 18 now, so I need a couple more pages of it straightening out. Now, 
Now, I like when when I've got a, an important part of my story, I like to repeat that same picture a couple times because sometimes when I'm flipping my book, you can skip pages by mistake and you don't want to skip the important part. So since an important part of my story is the balloon popping, I'm actually going to draw that one a couple times. So I'm going to do one more with the string completely straight and then I'm going to do a couple of the balloon actually popping. So to do that, I'm just going to add these little sound lines around the outside as a pop. And I'm going to repeat that same picture three times. So there's one already. Here's my second one. And I'm tracing this picture exactly. I'm not moving it at all. And now I'm on page 12. So now I know that I'm in the middle of my book. So you can kind of gauge how quickly you change your, your pictures. And I, I, like I said before, the more simple you keep your drawings, the better until you get the hang of it. Now on this page, I still would have the balloon because it hasn't popped yet. So this time I'm going to draw the actual balloon shape. All right. Now you can make your balloon or on mine. That was how my beginning was. So I feel like I need to make mine look like it's maybe floated around a little bit or maybe it floated down into the page. I think I need to add a little bit more. So you can adjust your ideas as you're working as well. Sorry, there's a big plane flying by, so hopefully it's not too noisy for you. So I'm going to move mine over, like maybe it floated over a little bit from where it was. I don't want to move it too much all at one time. Just the little movements each time. My balloons are a little weird shaped. That's okay. Right. This time I think I'm going to start making it look like my balloon is kind of floating up working its way across the page. So as I do that, I'm going to make the ground a little bit lower so that it looks like it's moving up. So I'm starting to get towards the front of my book. I'm on page six now, so I'm just keeping track of where I'm at in my story. And when you get to the end, if you find that you have an extra page or two, that might be a good opportunity to add a title. So I have this page here, I'm going to leave blank. And then the very front, I can add a title page if you have extra and you want to add a little bit more. So I'll say my title is called Pop. All right. So then what, the next thing that you would do is just check it. Make sure that you like your drawings. And that it's working pretty well. Mine's working fine. So then if you want to trace, then my one recommendation for you would be that you use an extra piece of paper between your layers. That way, when you trace, if it bleeds through, it doesn't bleed through onto another page underneath. So I'm just going to move my page, my extra paper, in between all of my layers when I trace them. All right, just like that. Okay, and then you can go back and erase the pencil marks if you want to. When you're done, you could even erase the page numbers. We don't really need those for the finished one. You could leave them too if you want. And then you just test it out. When you flip, I like to kind of flip it around, curl it around my fingers and use my fingernail to flip. Oh, that wasn't a very good flip. There you go. There's your flip book. Now I did the same design uh, with another one and I colored it as well. So you can see the finished one. Okay. All right, guys. I hope you have fun.